As media outlets continue to cover the fallout stemming from last week's deadly attack on our nation's capital, some are raising questions surrounding the objectivity of Western media. A Washington Post opinion piece entitled How Western Media Would Have Covered the Storming of the U.S. Capitol If It Had Happened in Another Country argues coverage of the event would have been different had it occurred on foreign soil. Karen Atia wrote that piece. She's a global opinions editor writing on international affairs and social issues for The Washington Post, and she joins us now. Uh, Karen, in your opinion piece, it examines how Western media may have reported the assault had it happened in another country. I spent many years as a foreign correspondent covering coup attempts, covering coups, covering insurrections, and the language that we used was very different from the language that reporters and the media is using to describe what happened here on Wednesday. So explain to our audience how those differences come into play. Yeah, uh, it's, um, you know, and honestly, uh, you know, these, these pieces, I've been doing them in this format for five years or so, and um, it's getting, in some ways, you know, harder and harder to, to almost do it uh, uh, because the events are just so... Uh, uh, you know, so I guess absurd. And it really just, I think for me, um, when I'm thinking about what we're seeing out of our country, um, and often you get this uh, knee-jerk reaction like, you know, this is, this is what we would see in Syria, this is what we would see in war-torn places. And I think uh, for me, it's, it's getting at this myth honestly, of American exceptionalism and trying to, uh, you know, also attack, yeah, you know, some of these practices in which we look at foreign countries um, in a very reductionist view, um, reducing often foreign countries to um, just places of, of uh, war or, or poverty or somehow that they are um, lesser than, particularly if those countries are, um, you know, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, um, non west Western countries. So for me, uh, trying to turn that lens on America um, gives a way to really look at the serious internal, the serious domestic challenges. Um, and I guess to a certain extent, it gives people outside of the U.S. Um, a lot of people outside of the U.S. have been saying um, a lot of these things about our problems for a long time. Uh, so I think for a lot of people, it might be refreshing, perhaps, to, to see the lens uh, turned on ourselves in this way. It, you know, this is a very serious topic, but I found myself sort of smirking as I was reading uh, you, your opinion piece, um, because you really sort of lay into the word choices that we make when we're talking about the other. And then when it is applied to this country, um, it feels uncomfortable. You know, you reference security forces, which is what we would talk about, you know, something happening elsewhere. You talk about the Republicans as the ruling party, which is, which is exactly the sort of phrasing that we would use when talking about uh, something like this happening in another country. And, you know, I recall sort of in Vlad, like, when this was happening, all this wrestling with, well, what is it? Is it, a, is it an attempted coup? Is it an insurrection? Is it a revolution? Like, we just could not make our mouths say those words um, as it was happening because we were not comfortable with those words applying to what happens here in the U.S. Um, can you kind of, like, uh, for people who haven't read the, your piece, can you sort of parse out like some other examples of um, the way in which um, we talk about other countries, particularly brown and black countries, and the, the, the language that we're used to using that we don't use here in America, but actually really describe what we saw happening on Wednesday? Yeah, indeed. I, I pay very close attention to, to language. Um, in these pieces, I like to remind viewers, you know, tongue in cheek, that, you know, we are a former British colony. We always love to remind other countries that they were formerly ruled by other people, and perhaps they should have never become independent in the first place. Um, you know, I, I very much uh, use the words, you know, I, I very much kind of get into tribalism when I talk about the U.S. I, I talk about white ethnic majorities, um, black ethnic minorities. <laughs> Again, a very reductionist view of, of, of the U.S. in many ways, but this is how we talk about other people in other countries. And you know, as far as as far as coup and, and, and terrorism, I think we are having those those conversations about language here. But I think it's uncomfortable to face the fact that the United States is going through political instability right now. 
we are going through a phase of political instability in the sense that we haven't we're 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 unsure of what's going to come politically from day to day um, at this point. So I think it is uncomfortable, but I think that's part of our job as, as journalists is to present an alternative, not even an alternative view, but to present what is happening. And I think for me, um, doing it in this way, a little, you know, satirical, um, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, presenting foreign experts on America, because, you know, often we have Western experts on other <laughs> countries. Um, but I do it in a way because it is easier sometimes to absorb things that are deeply <laughs> uncomfortable uh, when there is uh, a little bit of humor, because, again, what is happening right now around the world, people are are horrified in, in some ways. Um, and so I think it's, uh, I, I would hope that this does force us in the media in general to really think about how we talk about ourselves and how we talk about others. It's an excellent point. And, uh, you know, there are newsrooms across this country, Karen, as you know, who probably wrestled in editorial meetings with what do we call what we witnessed uh, on Wednesday, last Wednesday, in the United States Capitol, whereas, you know, when we were abroad, uh, it wouldn't have been a major discussion at the highest levels of news organization if we were covering, for example, I mentioned what happened in Mali. Now, in Mali, they, that, that was a real coup. There was a taking over of the barracks and, and communications, and um, th this was a coordinated effort. But I, I just sort of feel that, like, you're right, that the way that we talk about things and, the, and the, the things that we wrestle over as reporters and as editors to describe something happening here in the U.S. is oftentimes much more delicate than the way uh, our assignments come to us if we're covering something something in another country. And you write about the contrast when it comes in showing how Black Lives Matter protesters were handled in comparison to protesters that stormed the Capitol uh, last week. You look at the case of Joshua Williams, who stole food and set fire outside of a gas station in Ferguson. He was sentenced to eight years in prison. Meanwhile, Richard Barnett, the man who allegedly broke into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office, he faces one year in prison. What does that tell you? Yeah. Um you know, in, in, in my piece, I, I had a, a fictional expert from uh, from abroad comment on the the disparities between how the how security forces, how regime forces here in in the U.S. respond to black uh, black protesters versus you know white um, rioters and insurrectionists. And uh, you know, I had a anonymous an anonymous law enforcement official. Again, this is not a real quote, but uh, just this idea of well, maybe. Maybe it's because uh, we see black protesters as just worth three fifths of a white protester. So the more arrests, you know, the math it, it just balances out, right? Um, no, but honestly, I think it, it is um, from 2020 and the Black Lives Matters protests around the world, George Floyd around the world. We also have to remember not just what's hap happened January 6th, but the whole world was watching the Black Lives Matter uh, protests. The whole world saw George Floyd's murder. The whole world has, is seeing how we've been treating um, um, black people, uh, Muslims. The whole world is seeing COVID, <laughs> the, how we've handled or mishandled, completely botched the pandemic uh, response. And so I think it's, it's this sense that um, our place, uh, supposedly the leader, of the free world, that place is, it feels like it's its slipping from us, that, or that perhaps we never had it in the first place, mm. you know? So I think that um, it's a reminder that we are developing country in many, many, many ways. Yeah, that's, hmm. that's, that's, that's uh, a great Karen, point. Uh, Karen, I, I, yeah, it is a, it's a phenomenal point. Um, I encourage people to seek out your piece in the uh, Washington Post, how Western media would have covered the storming of the U.S. Capitol if it had happened in another country. It will do what good opinion pieces are supposed to do, which is really make you think. Put, put it down and think. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.